Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to make an Andy Warhol inspired portrait in Photoshop. Uh, looking at some of his work from the pop art movement and his silk screen technique, we're going to try and replicate this within Photoshop. Uh, it'd be good if you have a portrait of yourself already taken, preferably in square format. And the first thing we're going to need to do is open Photoshop up itself. And we can just take our photo and drag it over the Photoshop icon and it'll create a new document for us. The first thing we're going to need to do is go up here to Image, Adjustments, Black and White. Click OK. And then we're going to go back to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And we're going to play around with these sliders. What we're trying to do is create a good contrast between the, the lights and the darks. And depending on your photo, you may need to play around with this a bit. And I think that's fine what I have here, so I'm just going to go and click OK. So if you notice all the tools to the side here, in the Layers panel over here, these are the main tools that we're going to use. Uh, I've used this already, so you see I'm in red and white, and if you just click this icon, it'll put your uh, to black and white. Uh, up here in the Windows area, it's defaulted as the... Uh, workspace as when you open it. So we need to go now to image size. The width we're going to make 500 and you see I have this clicked here so it's just going to constrain the dimensions. So I'm just going to go back and change the width to 500 and then as well as the height. And I'm on pixels. The resolution is going to be 72 pixels per inch and we're going to click OK. So if you notice down here, I'm at a 66% view, and if I press Command plus, you see it zooms in, and Command minus zooms out, and if I do Command zero, it fits my document into full view. So we're going to use the pencil tool here, and if you look at the corner, you'll see this little triangle and there are other options available, and we're just going to use the pencil tool. Yours might have been set as the brush tool. And if we go up here, you can check the size of the brush, or sorry, of the pencil. Uh, the hardness we're going to leave at 100, and we're going to use just a size 10. So what we'll need is the black in the front here. We're going to click this button. Now we're just going to draw around the outline in order to separate our foreground with the background. And this stage doesn't necessarily have to be super perfect. Now we're going to go over here to the paint bucket tool. Yours might show the gradient tool, so if you just click and hold, and you're just going to click anywhere on the face here. Now we're just going to press Q. Now we're going to press Command Delete. Now we're going to do Command D. Now we're going to make a copy of this letter by pressing Command J. And it's the same as if we dragged this to this icon here. That would do the same thing, but Command-J is a shortcut. Now if we go up to Filter and Filter Gallery, you're going to click on Sketch and then the Halftone Pattern. And the contrast here, I'm just going to adjust. Uh, you don't want it too dark because we're going to multiply it later. And just make sure your pattern type is on Dot. And you see if I play with the size here, so we're going to leave that as 1 and click OK. Now we're going to go up to Filter, Sharpen, and Smart Sharpen. The amount you're going to put as 500%, the radius you're going to put as 1, and Reduce Noise to 0, and Remove Gaussian Blur, and then click OK. Now we're just going to go down here and just change it to multiply. If you go down to this tool here and command click, it'll make a new layer underneath. So on this layer, what we're gonna do is apply the color. So I'm gonna go over here, select any color that you prefer, click OK, and just click option delete, and this is gonna be our background color. Next, I'm gonna do the face and that's going to be the foreground color box and just select any color you prefer for the skin and click OK. Now I'm just going to go back and use the pencil tool or you can just press B for the shortcut 
And remember to increase the size for this. We can use the right bracket to increase it and the left bracket to decrease it. And now I'm just going to go over and paint in the skin. And you don't really need to worry about the, the black sections because what you're actually doing is painting over a mask. And I'm just going to zoom in by going Command Plus to get in some of the smaller areas. And I'm just going to increase the size of the brush to, to color it in faster. So now I'm just going to paint the eyes in white. And I'm just going to invert the two colors here by clicking this. And I'm going to zoom in on the image and decrease my uh, pencil size and just color those in white. So now I'm just going to do the same thing and paint in other areas of the face. So I'm just going to choose a different color here for the lips and zooming in again by pressing Command Plus and adjusting your brush with the left and right bracket. Now I'll just select another color and do some eyeshadow. So using this little eye symbol here we can turn off the layer. I'll just click it to show you how it looks. You might have these dots in your background as well, but if you want to take them out, you go over here to the eraser tool. And just like before, you see I'm on size 2, so I'm going to increase that with the, the brackets. Uh, hardness, because it's around my hair, I'm just going to make it a little bit softer. And you see I've erased the color because I'm on the color layer, so I'm just going to go back and click the other one and it's going to erase that dot pattern. So if you're happy the way it is, just go up to File, Export, Export As, go over here, change it to a JPEG, click Export, save it with a title, in a save destination, and click Save. So if you don't like the dotted background, I'm going to go back to that eraser tool and I'm just going to first slowly see if I use a hard edge here it's quite a distinct line so I'm just going to soften it a little bit and I'm just going to slowly work my way around the edge here first now I'll just increase the eraser size and erase all the background here and just like before, File, Export, Export As, Format JPEG, click Export, Title, Save Destination, and click Save. And here's just a few other examples I've done. Feel free to experiment and play around.